Hi, I'm Rebecca Ringett from the Community Coordinated Modeling Center, here to tell you a bit more about Kometo. Uh, so this video is one of a series of videos, tutorial videos, that uh, walk the viewer through a couple things about Kometo. All right, so I'm going to go into more detail on this notebook, the um, model data comparison and ensemble modeling notebook that was um, breezed through in the introduction video. We're going to dig into it a little bit more here, right here. OK, so the purpose of this notebook is twofold. It shows the user how to use a given fly through function for multiple models um, and how to pull in observational data to do a model data comparison. All right, so first let's start with this first block. There's a lot here, but it's quite simple when you break it down. So these three lines are simply the locations of the three model data output sets that uh, I want to fly a given trajectory through. If you uh, look at the names, it's all for a storm that occurred in March of 2013. So the first question to ask here is, where do these start and end times come from? How do you decide that? Well, to understand that, you go to the start here notebook. Uh, so I'm telling, let me show you how to get there. So this is the NASA Komodo website. You go to the docs folder, the notebooks folder, and scroll down to the start here notebook. Once this is on your machine, uh, you'll be able to run it interactively in the normal fashion. So if you scroll down to about a third of the way down, uh, what you'll see is this file times call uh, where model is a string and file directory Folder or is a string representing the complete file path to the um, data set of your choice. So if you execute this command for each model and directory combination, you will get the start and end times for each of those data sets. And you decide the start and end times for the fly through by um, choosing a start time and a stop time that are contained within that data set as shown with this call. So what I've done is to pick a start and end time that is fully contained by all three of the data sets that I want to analyze here. So uh, if you were going to do this for a different start and end time, you just simply change year, month, date, etc. on these and you leave the other, leave the rest of the syntax as is and you'll be fine. So variables, you can actually use more than one variable in the fly through. Um, typically users only use one. You might want to use four or five. Um, more details on that are in the other fly through notebooks. For now we're going to focus on one variable at a time. Notice that even though it's one variable it has to be um, given as a list. That's how the software works. Fine. Okay well how do you decide what variable to do? Uh, well that's going to be in the start here tutorial video and that walks you through how to pick a model, how to pick a variable that's relevant to your interest. Um, the example given here in the notebook is for temperature, but also for the same three um, models that are included in the fly th in this uh, fly through notebook. Okay, all right. So that's how you figure that out. Then coordinate system. How do you, wh what does this mean? Okay, so this is the coordinate system that the trajectory for the chosen satellite is retrieved in. Um, the choices for this coordinate system are a small subset of the entire list of coordinate systems that we support. And that is determined by um, uh, the happy interface to the satellite situation center. Uh, so let's dig a little bit more into that. So uh, we'll first uh, to get more information on the list of coordinate systems here, you access help for this particular function. So I'm going to glaze that over for the moment and come back to it. Uh, for now, let's talk about the satellite. How do, how did I get this string? Where'd that come from? All right. So this is the name of the satellite of or the trajectory that I want flown through the data. Later in the notebook, you'll see that it's the same satellite that the observational data is retrieved from. So where does this come from? So you go to the SPDF website. Uh, in this case, this is a subset of uh, the SPDF website called SSC Web. Uh, they have this ScanSat page where it is basically 
the satellite name, uh, the time range beginning and end, and whether it is has happened yet or is going to happen in the future, definitive or predictive. So I want uh, the CNOF web satellite. So that's the correct string to plug into the uh, flight through software. Okay. You can confirm easily that the March 2013 storm is well contained um, in the satellite trajectory time range. All right, so that's where that came from. Uh, you can use uh, any of the uh, any of the fly through functionalities, uh, any of the fly through tools right here. Uh, I've chosen real flight because it's the most relevant for model data comparison. Okay, moving on. Um, the next block functionalizes the data. So it takes the uh, given time series in each results dictionary returned by the fly through and functionalizes it. I notice the syntax is the same for each line except for this piece right here. On the second and any subsequent calls, you need to give the Komodo object created by the first call to the later call so that it adds the um, given variable to that object instead of making a whole new one. Also notice that the string given right here is turns out to be the name of the function in the Komodo object. Uh, the units given here are the units of the object, so on and so forth. And these are assumed to be one dimensional time series. Um, please see documentation for more details. All right, next, uh, I'm going to glaze over this because I talked about it in the uh, first video, but this is using Komodo's function composition to do some analysis here. Uh, feel free to adapt and play with it at will. And there's the plot the syntax as shown before. Um, I'm going to shift now to talk about well, how do you get the observational data into all of this? Uh, so the main way that we get observational data into Komodo, uh, there's two ways. Uh, the first one of two is shown here. We have a, a custom interface to the Happy Server, and we're using the CETA Web Happy Server to pull uh, ion temperature data from the Cindy instrument on the CNOFS satellite. Well, where did all of this come from? How do you figure this stuff out? So I'm going to point you in the right direction. Uh, first, you go to the happyserver.org slash servers website. Um, they have a search interface. You can go to SSC web to search for satellite trajectories or CETA web to search for observational data data sets. You can, do, you can click on that. It eventually loads the catalog and you use the um, features of the website to figure out this information there. OK, for time's sake, I'm going to cut to the chase here. Um, once you have figured this out, these three um, strings out using that interface, the rest of it is straightforward. Uh, this is the same start and end time from used in the fly through earlier in the notebook. Um, can leave this syntax alone and uh, it will run just fine with the same time frame that you used in the fly through for direct comparison. Once that observational data is retrieved, it's stored in this object, which can be added to your earlier Komodo object using this syntax. And this here is the name um, that the ion temperature data from the Cindy instrument takes in the new op in the Komodo object. And here are the units. And it's adding it to the previously existing object. Okay. Uh, then you can plot as I showed before and uh, do further analysis as you wish. All right, so that's the end of this tutorial. Uh, feel free to download it, have fun, uh, play around with it, go dig out what you want. See you in the next video.